agroecologic Sundarian Burhad has been established to deliver the mine capital development and tools for sustainable development, providing better ways to navigate through and manage new complexities and uncertainties with innovations that result in both profitable as well as environmentally friendly and socially responsible outcomes. Agriculture is a major contributor to environmental issues today. Agriculture is now a big part of the problem. We know about a third of the greenhouse gases do come from agriculture, uh, partly deforestation, partly our practices. Now again, how can we help? Oh, we can help a great deal. We could actually, if we were to move agriculture to a more sustainable practices, agroecology, uh, conservation agriculture, organic agriculture, name it, there's a number of those options out there. We could actually absorb as much carbon as the whole transport sector produces. So, so we actually can become part of the solution, will be part of the problem. And everything actually here again goes back to the soil. If we have a good soil, we have more plant health, we need, we need less artificial means to control our pests because we have a strong plant. We have more productivity on the farm, not just the yield of a crop. And that becomes then the solution to the environmental social economic problems. 50 farmers at Tangilan began training in the system of rice intensification, or SRI, with agroecologics facilitators, organized by the Honorable Datu Wilfred Bumburing. Datu Wilfred Bumburing is the Malaysian Federal Member of Parliament representing that district. Tangilan is just south of Kota Balud, recognized as the largest rice bowl of Sabah. So far, the benefits of SRI have been validated in more than 41 countries. productivity solutions so that we can get more food stuff for everyone but at a lower cost. Um, so this suggests that it's time for us to start thinking about what I would characterize as post-modern agriculture, the next step beyond what we currently call modern agriculture. And I would suggest this will involve reducing agriculture's chemical intensity, uh, energy intensity and chemical dependence. We'll be responding to the consumer and environmental needs for healthier food production. And these changes will not happen quickly or completely, but I'm suggesting they should begin soon. We're speaking with Professor Norman Akhoff at the third quadrennial International Rice Conference held in Hanoi this year. How can you say SRI is providing a more climate smart agriculture uh, methodology? Well, we have the two sides of it. One is how do we uh, adapt to the changes in precipitation, temperature, and so forth, and then how can we reduce? those changes. The second, of course, is much more difficult. Um, India, there are no, any number of reports now that during the drought uh, last year, during the failure of the monsoon, that SRI crops simply stood up better. And the farmers, farmers got harvest who, or their neighbors who didn't use SRI, didn't have any. The uh, agriculture minister of Tamil Nadu has reported, it was in the Hindu newspaper in uh, December last year, that even though the monsoon had caused the uh, uh, rice area to be reduced in that year because of the climate change, they nevertheless increased their production because he said that SRI yields were in the six to nine ton per hectare range, whereas the state's average is otherwise about three and a half tons. Um, I think the most significant thing we're most confident in is buffering against drought, water shortage, uh, but we have also seen that storm damage is less when the winds and the rain come in. The SRI plants being deeper rooted, having stronger tillers can withstand the storm damage. They don't lodge, don't blow over. Um, so pest resistance, all there's a lot of evidence, especially here in Vietnam, uh, that you can reduce the incidence of pests and diseases. Uh, in 2006 in Vietnam here, they did trials across eight districts and the average reduction of the major pest diseases was 55% during the spring 
season, the early growing season, and 70% in the summer season. So it means you don't need to use pesticides, which is a good environmental impact. It's not climate change related as such, but it is uh, important for farmers and for the environment. Um, and we're starting to get evidence that, uh, well, we knew all along that if you stop flooding your fields, you should reduce the emissions of methane gas into the atmosphere, which is a much more potent gas than carbon dioxide. We were concerned that nitrous oxide, which is even more potent, uh, greenhouse gas might increase when you don't flood your fields, but it's normally generated from soil systems during the aerobic phase, not the anaerobic uh, you know, phase without oxygen. Uh, so far, the studies been done by both Japanese and Indonesian scientists have indicated that uh, the methane is definitely reduced and they don't see enough nitrous oxide emissions that would offset the benefits. Uh, but no, much more work needs to be done on that. Uh, those numbers will change field to field, season to season, even change in rice variety might give you different results. So we're hoping that the uh, powers that be, which control resources for research, uh, would say there's enough evidence how this could be seen of it, we should look at it and get some uh, idea of what are the magnitudes Pembangunan pertanian berkelanjutan sebagai koreksi dari Green Revolution, pembangunan hijau yang dulu banyak menggunakan pupuk-pupuk kimia dan cara-cara yang ternyata bisa mengganggu lingkungan, terutama untuk jangka panjang. Bapak Presiden yang kami hormati, nama kami Idetut Supatia, kami petani dari Bali. Dalam kesempatan yang berbahagia ini, kami di Bali yang difasilitasi oleh Desim Nekon Kuiwat untuk memberikan fasilitas maupun pembelajaran kami di lapangan untuk pelajari sistem SRT Kodani dan dan baru kami tahu bagaimana kebenaran daripada pertanian SRT Organik ini yang akan mampu merubah atau merubah negeri kita ini di sektor pertanian secara luas dan akhirnya bisa mempersembahkan pangan dan untuk mempertahankan suasana badan pangan semuanya. Terima kasih Pak Ketut dari Tabanan. Ada pepatah bahasa Inggris, seeing is believing. Lihat dulu, yakin, baru mengerjakan. Oleh karena itu pelatihan menjadi penting. Uh, kebun percontohan, penting non-fashion plot juga penting. Tadi Pak Solikin waktu panen bersama saya menceritakan waktu baru dikenalkan suami istri bisa ribut ini karena yang tadinya menanam itu banyak begitu kok cuma satu dari apa kira-kira kalau nggak tumbuh seperti apa? Tapi setelah melewati fase satu hari tiga hari tujuh hari dan seterusnya ternyata teknologi ini tidak liru dan bahkan mendatangkan berbagai uh, kemajuan dan peningkatan. Sekali lagi mengapa saya dukung SRI dan mari kita kembangkan suas-suasnya karena produktivitas naik tanpa merusak lingkungan itu kuncinya. Jadi saudara bertanggung jawab anak kepada anak cucu kita. Para generasi muda tanjawan dihabis-habiskan yang ada di tempat kita ini tanpa e, memikirkan nasib mereka. Farmers in Sabah have been learning about the system of rice intensification since 2009. SRI is worth deep consideration for any agro-based economic development because it represents an agroecological strategy that enhances food production and contributes to food security while at the same time improving the natural resource base on which agriculture and other human activities as well as life itself depend.
Two farmers who have harvested their SRI yields have reported averages of 9 tons per hectare both in the district of Ranao. Agriculture is a major contributor to environmental issues today. We need to understand it as multifunctional or part of a complexity with commodity as well as non-commodity outputs that impacts not just economics but also human or social well-being and environmental sustainability. And first, Professor Victor Lee, thank you very much for coming to Salva. And uh, to be honest with you, when they organized your first approach me, they told me about the project. I said, my ministry has nothing to do with the project. <laughs> that was quite apprehensive because I don't want to step into somebody's uh, door <laughs> and try to be an expert on something that is obviously not my field. I think perhaps the reasons why I encourage them to do it is simply because I think there is a need for us to change the mindset of farmers. You see, we are doing too much to uh, destroy the environment on the pretext or on the assumption that we are going to produce more food. Of course, it does produce more food, but at what expense? I think that's the real issue. Take for instance, Kundasa. Uh, Kundasa in Rana district where I come from. If you look at the uh, vegetable farming, it is the uh, main source of vegetables, temperate vegetables in the former country and even beyond summer. But in the process, they had practically, practically <coughs> polluted uh, the river that runs through up to Ranao, and that river really ran through the length and breadth of Sava and, and, and ends up in uh, somewhere in Sinaka and Nabu. Perhaps this is the time is now for us to change. Go back and tell the farmers to produce a better crops. No, thank you very much, and uh, uh, thank you very much uh, to all the professors and of all of us who have taken the time to do this. Terima kasih. Sandwiched between two five-star resorts is a floating village in Kota Kinabalu. Traditionally, this is home to many fishermen. The stilt houses pose a challenge to urban planners. But for many throughout Sabah, this is simply home. If you don't have access to a vehicle that can navigate the mud roads from your stilt house on the beach of Mapan Mapan village, most of the time you simply don't get medical treatment. You endure the pain or wait for help. And help was what a group of physicians, dentists and dental assistants brought to an isolated fishing village near Pitas. Led by Rotary Club President Mahmoud Tahir and past president Datuk Dr. Ganesh. Over 70% of the world's poor in developing countries live in rural areas and are directly or indirectly dependent on agriculture for their livelihoods. These people are the most food insecure. Farmers, fishermen and forest users, as well as the urban poor, are also badly affected. In many developing countries, under investment in the agricultural sector, the dismantling of public support programs and the impact of trade liberalizations have undermined the small-scale farm sector and fishermen and national food production capacity, leaving these communities vulnerable to price volatility. Undernourished, many of these communities suffer health-wise in isolation. Uh, today is uh, 28th of November, uh, year 2010, and uh, we are having the medical audit program. Uh, the place is uh, quite uh, far off from uh, Kota Kinabalu, more, more than 300 uh, kilometers, I guess. The rural area projects that we do usually 
uh, do uh, twice uh, yearly uh, and uh, this is uh, the, the first uh, pro uh, project for the year uh, and uh, we are choosing this place uh, uh, almost at the tip of Borneo uh, in the district of Pitas we are already in this uh, place so we are bringing doctors so we have two doctors uh, doing uh, a general medical checkup then we have a uh, dentist most of them uh, are fishermen and as you can see, most of the crowd are older women and younger children. The young people have left the villages, looking for work in larger towns and cities. There are a few men around, fishermen. So we asked them, how's the catch these days? Dulu banyak ikan. Banyak. Berapa banyak dulu? Banyak lah. Macam... 30 kilo, 50 kilo. Sekarang sisa berapa? Sekarang 2-3 ekor. Dulu 3, 50 ekor ada? Ada. Sekarang, berapa tahun lalu itu? Kurang ada 10 tahun lebih. Lah. Makin hari makin kurang ya? Iya. Itu kira-kira kenapa itu sebabnya? Tidak tahu. Di sini tidak tanam padi? Tidak tanam. Ya, kalau dikasih kesempatan untuk pertanian padi, mau? Mau ikut tidak? Ya? Di mana? Eh, tanam padi di bukit. Kalau ada, boleh juga. Boleh juga ya? Iya. A few kilometers up the road, some people in the community are planting rice up the hill. This might be a good supplement for their income. Converting fishermen to land-based agriculture, growing food cash crops such as organic rice, will be worth trying, especially if they can make good use of intuition about life below the surface of the sea. In this case, it would be about developing an appreciation for soil biodiversity below the surface. It's probably hard to imagine, but each of these rice plants started off as a single seedling. In this experimental farm, another Rotary Club member is learning how to plant with the system of rice intensification, or SRI, planting it on drier soil, much like hill padding. The six steps of SRI are as follows. Plant young seedlings at about seven days old and plant one or single seedlings instead of many in one position. Plant in wider spacing, say 30 by 30 centimeters square grids. Intermittent irrigation is practiced where the water comes on and off but never flooded. Weeding or soil aeration is practiced every 10 days until 40 days old and finally provide organic fertilizer. Rice straw is turned into compost. These will provide bigger and healthier roots with abundant soil biodiversity, life below the surface. The use of organic instead of chemical fertilizer will be better for marine life and for fish. Besides, they produce bigger and healthier crops like this SRI sample versus a conventional rice plant. Biology, soil is a living body. And so, so we can work again on seeds for a long time. We have such a huge yield potential which is unrealized. And why? Is because we have neglected the basis of agriculture, the farming system, and the soil, soil science. And uh, I think we have to re-establish some of the priorities there also in the right places. Um, we know the constraints next which we're going to have in terms of water and temperature. So again, we need to mitigate for this and to adapt. And I think science is working very hard in the, that direction. But all this will do nothing if our soils are not well managed. 
because one way of mitigating uh, against floods and droughts is to have more organic matter in the soil. So we know that, so we need to work more on this. Now we'll have a progress report on a commitment made two years ago in 2008. I'd like to invite to the stage Ken Lee of Lotus Food. For 70% of the world's poor who live in rural areas, agriculture is the main source of income and employment. About 80% of the world's rice is grown by small-scale farmers in developing countries. Rice cultivation is the principal activity and source of income for more than 100 million households in Asia and Africa. This is the space into which Ken Lee's commitment stepped, and I'd like for him to give you a follow-up. Thank you, Mr. President. In 2008, Lotus Foods committed to create new market incentives for smallholder farmers around the world who are adopting a more sustainable method of growing rice called the system of rice intensification. SRI enables low-income farmers to double and triple their yields using 90% less seed, 50% less water, and no agrochemicals. Finding ways to increase rice production, the staple food of over half of the planet, with dwindling land and water resources and without further degrading the environment is a major challenge of the 21st century. Rice grown in flooded fields use about one quarter to one third of the Earth's freshwater reserves on an annual basis. Flooded fields also breed disease vectors associated with standing water like malaria. And flooded fields account for about 15% of man-made methane emissions which, of course, are major contributors to global warming. With SRI, women who make up the majority of rice farmers can grow more rice on less land, leaving more land to cultivate and grow high-value vegetables and fruits, which further supplement their own diets as well as incomes. In this way, women and children have especially benefited from this initiative. To date, 3,000 family farmers in Cambodia, Madagascar, and Indonesia are now working with Lotus Foods. We expect to be working with triple that amount and plan to expand to countries such as Sri Lanka, India, and Mali. In 2009 and 2010, Lotus Foods launched three new varieties of rice grown by farmers using SRI practices into the U.S. market where they are being sold at natural food stores like Whole Foods across the country. By implementing organic certification and providing fair trade premiums, farmers' incomes have increased by at least 25 percent, and American consumers have access to healthier, more sustainably grown rice choices. Companies like Lotus Foods are playing a critical role in development, linking farmers to global markets, we are also enabling the consumer to play a part in the solution in addressing some of the important issues of our time, poverty alleviation, food security, climate change, as well as water scarcity. We believe that we can change the world by the way that we do our business. That's uh, my report for today. I hope to come back and have a, another report. If you are interested in SRI, there's a, a session going on where Jim Carrey, the actor, uh, we'll be talking about his Better You Foundation and the good work that they're doing to support farmers uh, who are uh, using this new methodology of growing rice that's more sustainable. Jim Carrey here. Jim, we, we know you as an actor, and we're tickled to get to know you. <coughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so what are you doing here? But actually, I'm here today uh, to talk about a, a fantastic discovery called SRI. Uh, which stands for the System of Rice Intensification. Um, five years ago, I started the Better You Foundation uh, to promote sustainable and transformational ideas. I wanted to provide relief, but, but uh, more importantly, I wanted to make sure that, uh, that we were trying to empower people, that we were teaching people how to fish rather than hand them one. And uh, so when I heard about the SRI technique, 
from uh, Professor Norman Upoff of Cornell University. Uh, I knew it was one of those ideas that I really wanted to get involved with and back to the hilt. Um, but this is the difference between regular rice and SRI rice. I mean, there's really no comparison. It's quite impressive. And, uh, you know, there's a, initially there's, there's a little bit of skepticism when you start telling people about this because it sounds too good to be true and there's a lot of tradition involved. There's thousands of years of tradition involved. But uh, when the guy next to you is making four times as much rice as you are, the transition becomes a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show you that because I think it's more often than not more than this. This is Linta Superstore in Damai. And this is where the organic SRI is being sold in Sabah. For now, sitting on the bottom shelf of the organic food section is a possible solution for poverty alleviation and food security for many of Sabah's underserved communities, smallholders and even fishermen selling at 13 ringgit and 80 cents per kilo. Enhancing adaptability, creativity and resilience for people, performance and planet. Agroecologic aims to provide tools and skills to navigate through the multifunctional aspects of food security and environmental concern in collaboration with multiple stakeholders in various industries and agencies and to manage those complexities to achieve profitable sustainability for all.